Hi guys, um, in this video I'll be looking at question 4 in the January 2021 CSEC Maths paper. Okay, so in this question we have a function that is defined here, right? It is 3x minus, sorry, 3 minus 2x. The diagram shows a mapping diagram for the function f, determine the value of e. So in this function here, right, this is our function here, 3 minus 2x. This is the input to the function, that is the value of x, and we want to figure out what is the value of e. All we need to do here, guys, is to just plug minus 1 into my function. So this is going to be 3 minus 2 multiplied by minus 1. This is going to be 3. And what this means here, it's minus 2 multiplied by minus 1, which becomes plus 2. So therefore, this answer here is going to be 5. So therefore, you're going to just tell them that e is equal to 5, right? Determining the simplest form, an expression for the inverse, right? So f of x is 3 minus 2x. f of x is 3 minus 2x. Right? And I want to find inverse. That's what this means here. That means inverse. Right? Now, <clears throat> these are the steps that we usually take. We let y equal to 3 minus 2x. Right? The next step is to interchange x and y. Right? So you're going to end up with x is equal to 3 minus 2y. And my next step is to make y the subject of the formula. So if I carry the minus 2y to the left, it becomes 2y is equal to 3 minus x. And therefore, y is equal to 3 minus x over 2. So therefore, I just need to make a statement and say that the inverse is equal to 3 minus x over 2. Right, so that's my inverse function here. The next part they want us to find, and notice they put this in bold composite f squared. Right now, f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x. Right now, what students tend to do, they will just square this thinking that's what they have to do, but that's incorrect. Right, f squared is actually a composite function, so f squared of x is actually equal to f of f. That's what we're doing. So in this scenario here, what um, we are attempting to do, we're going to take f of x and you're going to plug that into the function f, right? That's what you're going to do. So to do that, that means, so let me write this in a way that makes sense to you all. So you have f of x equal to 3 minus 2x. I'm going to write back f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x, right? Now, when you're finding the composite function f squared, what you're doing, you're taking all of this, right? That's f. And I'm going to plug that into f as x. That's what you're doing. So let's simplify that now. So that's going to be 3 minus 2, open brackets, 3 minus 2x. So this is going to be 3. And then minus 2 by 3 gives me minus 6 minus 2 by minus 2x is going to give me plus 4x and this is going to give me 4x 3 minus 6 is minus 6 sorry minus 3 so therefore f squared is 4x minus 3 all right so the next thing we need to do now right is this part two here, right? Um, they said state the value of f, now they said state, right? So we wanna figure out f, f inverse of minus two, right? Now, what that means, if you understand how a function works, we have an input to a function, you have f of x, right? So this goes into the function and what you get out is f of x. Now there's something called the inverse of the function, which looks like this. And if I were to go in the reverse direction, I take my output and I put it back in the function, 
I should get back what my X value is, right? So in this question here, they are telling us to find F, F inverse of minus two. So the output of the function, right, is, one second. Yeah, the output of the function here, right, is actually going to be minus two, right? But if I put that back into the function, what you're going to end up with is the same minus two, right? Nothing changes. I mean, you guys could go and work it out, right? And you'll still get a minus two, right? That's an option. Let's do the last part now. In this last part here, we they said draw using a ruler. They want us to draw some lines. So the first line is x is equal to a half, right? Now, x is equal to a half is simply a vertical line, right? It's a vertical line that passes through the point x is equal to a half, right? So let's, um, let's draw that vertical line here, right? So we're going to draw a vertical line. But this vertical line here, it passes through um, minus a half. Sorry, it passes through a half, right? So, actually, I'll make this red. I find I'm not seeing it properly. All right, so this here represents my line x is equal to a half, right? So it's a vertical line and it's x is equal to a half, right? So that's this first line here. The next line that they want us to draw is y is equal to x. Now the line y is equal to x, basically every point on that line will have the exact same x and y value. So 0, 0 is a point on that line, 1, 1 is a point on that line, 2, 2 is a point on that line, and so on. So the line y is equal to x looks like this. It passes through the origin. Right? So it does something like that. That is the line y is equal to x. So we're getting a mark for that. That's y is equal to x. So that's this line. The next line we have to draw is x plus y is equal to 5. x plus y is equal to 5. Right? Now in order to draw this line, I need to have two coordinates on that, of that, on that line so I can plot it. So the easiest thing to do is to say when x is equal to 0, right? Um, 0 plus y is equal to 5. Therefore, y is equal to 5. So therefore, a point on that line that we need to draw will be 0, 5. Right? We need a next point. Let's say when y is equal to 0. What's going to happen in this case? We have x plus 0 is equal to 5. Therefore, x is equal to 5. So this point here is going to be 5, 0. Right? So therefore, I'm going to plot those two points, and that will allow me to plot the or draw the graph y x plus y is equal to 5. So this is one point here. This is an x point here, right? This point here is 0, 5. And this point down here is 5, 0. So all we need to do, we're going to draw an x line. So one line passes through here, and the second one passes through somewhere down here. Right? So those are my lines. So this line here is x plus y is equal to 5. So we get one mark for each of those things. And the last part, they want us to label, right? So we have three inequalities here. The first one is x is greater than or equal to a half. So let's go to the graph here now. And we want to draw x is greater than or equal to a half. So that means I should be shading this part of my graph, right? The next one is y is greater than or equal to x. So y is greater than or equal to x, right? I need to decide where am I going to shade? Am I going to shade uh, this way or am I going to shade this way? So I need to determine that. And how I determine that is by selecting a test point. Now I'm going to choose the point zero, 00, you can use any point you want. I'm going to use, oh, sorry, wait. Which one am I doing? Sorry, y is greater than or equal to x. So I can't use um, 
I can't use this point here, zero, zero, because it's on my line. So I'm going to choose any point, right? I'm going to choose, let's say, 2, 1, right? This point here is 2, 1, and I'm going to test to see if I should be shading that side or the other side of the line, right? So my test point here, right, is 2, 1. So I'm going to plug that in. That means that X is 2 and Y is 1. So therefore, 1 is greater than or equal to 2. Now that statement here is false, right? And what that tells me is that that point that I've selected here, this point here, it does not lie in the region that I should be shading. So therefore, I should really be shading in that direction. So I'm shading above the line, right? So there's one more line we need to consider, and that is the X plus Y. So this one here is X plus Y is less than or equal to 5. So to determine where we're going to shade, we select a test point. Now, this point zero, 00 here, I can use it now because it does not lie on the line. So this test point here is 0, 00. So therefore, X is 0 and Y is 0. So I'm going to substitute that into my inequality. 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 5. So 0 is less than or equal to 5. So that statement is true. So if that statement is true, it means that the point zero, 00 actually lies in the region that I should be shading. So therefore, according to this, <clears throat> I should be shading this way. Right? So now you have to visualize this. What is my common region here? Because that's what the question asks us for. What is the common region? They said label R as a common region. If we look at these arrows or these regions that we should be shading, right? The common region here is going to be here. Right? This is my common region. Right? So guys, this takes care of um, question four, I think it is. Yeah, question four. Right? Um, I hope you like the video. Please hit like and subscribe and feel free to share with other students. All right, guys.